Right then guys, I'm literally riding puffhead and puffhead. I got all my gear. I'm riding for some tench. Tense this morning. Uh, as you see the sun's getting up already. It's seven o'clock this morning. I'm literally riding into the lake. I'm literally just around the corner from it. I thought I'd do a little vlog now before I start fishing because uh, I want to get the bloody rods out and not wait 10 minutes to set the camera up. <laughs> but I will start out. Um, but yeah, it's going to be pop ups and I might try bottom bait in an area I think might be clear. It's not a PVA bag, but probably, probably all going to be pop ups and float fishing. Got three rods today. Get it right out. I'm not messing around. Tenchy, tenchy, tenchy. Right then, peeps, here we are. Bit fucking close then, weren't I? <laughs> right. Homemade boilie. That's what I'm using today. Trying to get it on camera. That's the camera. That's the camera. Alright, I've got my homemade today. Why is the camera all misted? So. Homemade camera. Homemade camera. Homemade boilie. For some reason, the camera's being ass. Yeah, I really need a new camera, but so expensive, man. Can't afford one. Right, anyway, 10 mil boilie, what I've made, PVA bag. We're gonna grab a little talk talk today. A little talk talk. I've got a funny feeling I am gonna catch. So, it's gonna be a catching one. I say that, I'm very confident today, aren't I? Hey, okay. and I'll tell you why in a minute why I'm so big headed today. Get this rod out there. Next rig. Oh, and I've got a new rod to show you. When, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Talk long rod. This is short bush. So, here's my new rod. Paid £10 pound for it. And if you can see that, it's quite hard for me to even read. But I paid £10 pound for it. It's a Sonic two and three quarter test curb SKS. Paid £10 for it. Someone was using it as a spod rod. <laughs> he barely used it, he told me, and you can tell by the looks of it, it, you can tell by the feel of the rod, that it's still quite stiff at the end. And people will be like, why are you using two and three quarter test curves? Because a lot of weed and snags. That's why I'm using a big rod, I'm not messing around. And as you've seen with the carp, uh, I want to be able to land it. I don't want it out there on a quiver tip with eight pound line, you know? So I'm using the bright white pop-up again today. That kicker slid off. This is why you need big rods on.
white, white pop-up sticking out of his mouth, see? Alright, so get my nuts. I just want to show you. Nail tench. Really happy with that. Flew off, as you see. Crazy little fight on it. Really happy though. He's about two pound. One pound and a half. Right, why was I so confident? Well, I came down here yesterday and uh, I had one fish but lost three in the weed. Not to hook pulls or anything, but actual weed getting stuck on the hook. Um, I was trying to record it, but someone was sawing and, uh, sorry, using a chainsaw and it was relentless. And honestly, I just couldn't film properly. Every time I went to speak, it just came on, came on. It was relentless. Um, but yeah, and I, I knew I, there was slight things I did wrong yesterday. Um, one was my hooks were too small. I was on the tench page, listening to some advice from people, and they, and they were all about hook size. Everyone was using tiny hooks. I thought, you know what, I might just use a smaller hook, and I did, didn't I? And what happened? Where it was hair rigged onto the float, they were dragging my bait round, they looked small fish, and it just got covered in weed, got a take, picked it up, played it for a couple of seconds, come off, big chunk of weed on the hook. So I was like, Argh. Two minutes later, got a screaming run off the cart rod, picked it up, what's that? Come off. I was like, no way, reeled it in, chunk of weed on the pop-up. So I figured out what happened. With the PVA bag, I noticed sometimes, they float, even when you make holes in them. So I think my hook link actually fell through without the PVA bag and just went into the weed. So when I got a take, it was full of weed. Because that never happened before. This time I've made proper holes in the PVA to make sure that those bags sink. Because you didn't realise until you can like, if you could see, you could actually see them floating your rig up. And if your rig falls first, it just falls into the weed and then the bag falls on top. So, you know. But um, it's going to be 18 degrees today. Um, like I said on the intro when I was riding here, I got up uh, 6 o'clock this morning. Um, I can only fish for 5 hours and then I'm um, off to work. But Yesterday, I had all my takes from seven o'clock in the morning till 10 in the morning, and then it just went dead on me. I mean, literally, it was just run after run, and I just couldn't land it, it was bizarre. Um, never had that in there. Like, I caught the odd fish, but not three in a row. So I wasn't happy. One could have been an eel, but still, I, I knew the presentation was the key there. They were on it, and uh, there was fizzing, bubbling everywhere, and I just wasn't getting them, you know? So that was a big mistake by me there. Um, learned that lesson. Um, when you know you should be getting a bite, and you should, you know? Right, stop it there. Oh, I've got the float out now. Um, yesterday, um, I was hair rigging. I didn't have no bread. I tried worms. All I could catch was rud constantly. Um, even at the end of the video, I might do it. Oh, I will. At the end of this video, towards the end of the video, I'll show you what I'm all about. I was zooming on the float. The float was just getting knocked about everywhere. Like, literally, it's just little rud and minnows hitting the float constantly to the point of where it was going under and everything. So you imagine if you're hooked at the bottom of there with your lead shots and the float's getting dragged around, eventually it drags your hook bait into a, into weed. So that, that was a load of rubbish. So um, I'll zoom in in a bit, and because I'm trying not to get the small fish going, I'm just feeling corn and pellet. Hopefully I won't get them going too much and they won't attack my float so much. But honestly, I couldn't even get the worm through to swim and they were just grabbing it, grabbing it, grabbing it. So oh, it's just a pain in the ass. But anyway, I've got a size 10 hook on and a massive chunk of bread. And I think sometimes the big bits of bread, even if it's in the weed, I think they can still get a hook hole with a worm. With a worm, you see, the, they can wrap around the weed and everything else, even a tail wheel, so they pick up everything. But with just a chunk of bread, I'm hoping it's going to keep it pinned down. And But yeah, so I've got two rods, what a two and three quarter test curve. One I've had for about two years, and it's so soft, honestly. It's really good, but the other one that I just played that fish with was with my new rod. That's why it's quite stiff, but um, I'll break her in. It won't be two and three quarters anymore, it'll be two and a half. But um, I'd normally like two and a half, to really, be honest with you. Um, and people are like, ah, oh, you always come up at big rods. It's like, yeah, but I'm actually fishing waters full of weed, um, snags, and sometimes I've got to whack out big leads. So a two and three quarter test curve, especially one that's been used for two or three years, loses its three quarter. Like that feels like a two pound test curve rod now. But um, still a really awesome rod, but the other one's definitely a bit stiffer. But uh, at least I know if I get a carp on, I'm going to land it. I do not want to be landing a carp. On a, I've done it, it's £12 last time in there before on the float, and it was absolute mayhem. I was panicking the whole time. I was like, oh my God, I've got, I've got £6 line on, and I've got a £12 wild common on, on two grains of corn on the float, trying to fish for tench. And uh, 
It's where match guys always snap up in that, you know? It's hard to control a fish on light lines and light tackle when you've got loads of weeds and snags. When it's open water, I could play this fish all day, but the water's just chock with weed. But I'll do some little zooming shots in a bit. Anyway, right, chop, chop, bam. Yeah, see, in an ideal world, I would just float fish. Uh, ideal world, this is ideal, isn't it? I'm trying to make things easier for yourself. Um, but you know what I'm saying, it's like, uh, it's just so much weed out there. I can't, I want, I don't want to be fishing just my rod length out. And my rake and rope only goes so far. So I can only fish so far, if that makes sense. So, um, with the rake. So this is why I was on like, I wouldn't even fish it if I didn't have PVA bags. Just casting out with like a choddy or, or pop up with no PVA bag or anything like that. It's just, it's like hoping, you know, luck. And I don't like those odds. I've done it too many times. I used to come in years ago when I wasn't very good fisherman when I was a beginner. And uh, I had many, many blanks because I didn't know what I was doing. I was trying to fish how you would on a commercial on a wild lake and it just doesn't work, man. You can't come down here with a maggot feeder and just cast out and get 10 carp, uh, 10, 10 tench, you know? It's, it's so weedy. The maggot would just disappear. They all disappear. Before you know it, you've got eels. You have eel after eel. I've done it. That's what I mean. I've done it. <laughs> I come down here one time with maggots and I'll show you, I'll show you what you mean. And anyone tench love maggots. Uh, but the problem is, so do the eels. And if you catch it, the eels in here are fish eaters, meaning that they have big, quite big heads and they spook anything out in the swim, man. If you've got a couple of big eels, and I, I reckon I will get some in the next couple of sessions, um, you see what I'm on about? These eels, not exaggeration, they're about this long, right? They are big, big eels. I've got a photo of some of them, and you see what I'm on about? I try and actually do a little video on them, and uh, honestly, they're savages in here. I've had them on bread, corn, everything. Um, so yes, and I'm plus I ain't buying maggots. This is the cheapest place I fish. So, and I've always noticed as the day gets on with my flu, um, it just starts bouncing around more and more. So the more lead shots I need to put on the bottom to make sure they're not dragging that hook bait around. Um, they're not too bad at the moment. They're, they're locking it around and stuff. But I've got if you um, and if you fish like with the float just sticking out, that's another one. If you do that. They bloody, every time they hit it, it looks like you've got a bite. So you have to, I have to have the float sticking out quite a bit. Um, the way I think about it is there's that tench in here, not like commercials where they just spit and pick up. They, they, they're taking your bait. So I find that when you get a tench in here, the float doesn't even go and um, lift up. It just goes, and just bolts out the swim. I've never had a lift bite in here yet. The only lift bite I've got is from a rud. <laughs> Right, here you get in, guys. Let's go have a little talk talk. Um, basically, how I've got my free rod set up, this is my thinking, okay? I've got one rod towards the bush, not too close, because it will snap me up. One out where I always put the bait, where I've been putting bait constantly, so they know there's bait there. That's where I got the run. And then the flow. So if I get a run off either one of them, I will bend down when I'm playing the fish, grab the float rod, because it's only there, flip it in, drop the float rod, now that area is clear. That rod's pinned down. The weed's not that bad at the moment. That's why I'm using bat legs. And when I say that bad, I mean there's weed along the bottom, but it's not all through the top. So as you notice, I didn't come back with a big ball of weed. So I'm not too worried about bat legs at the moment. That's why you've got them, and they're both pinned down off the rod tips. So either one goes, I can, I've only, I'm only going to have one rod in the water at that time. Because I'll pull out one rod and get it out of the way. The only way I'm going to have two rods in... The only time I have two rods, I'm playing one, uh, playing a fish with two rods in the water at the same time, is if I get one on the float. But they're both pinned down off the rod tips, and I've never had a problem because the tench, when you hook into them in here, because they're wild, they don't come to the margin. They go out. They bloody hate it. They go to the reeds to the right, or they go out. And I know that from experience. They never go down this way. So um, that's why I'm not worried about my rod being pinned down there. I've never had, I'm just saying this now, and it's probably going to happen to me, um, never had the rods take out my lines. I fish take out the leather line. If I had these lods, the lines just going straight to the to the leads. If I get any fish on, I'm gonna try and play it underneath the lines. It'd just be a nightmare, honestly. So I've learned through experience to keep these rods tips, the, the bat leads off the end of the rod tip, so it's like that. Makes sense? So it just drops off like that. Not like an angle like that, drops right off, so it's flat. So if I get a fish, it goes straight past. Right, I'm gonna do a little recast. Oh, here we go. 
Look at him, he's on one today. He's on one today. <laughs> um, what's it called? You notice my trolls are gone. The trolls are gone. You notice that? Carp Hunter, where have you been, man? I've been looking for you. I even found him again. I found him again. I told you I'm going to terrorise you with my words, like you said to me. Remember that, you muppet? Um, I've been terrorising him. Every time I see him, I literally, because I go, obviously, as a YouTuber now, I actually do, do research on other videos to see what's out there and what people are doing, so I'm not, like, copying or, you know, being a clone of other YouTubers. And uh, he's virtually on every video, man. Comments on everything, and it's always... Um, I seen him on Carl and Alex the other day, and I went straight away jumped on that. He's like, he's such a wetty man. Now he's disappeared, hasn't he? What are you gonna terrorise me, Carl Punter? Yeah, you're so funny. I could have blocked you when I first started your muppet, but I didn't. I kept you on there because you look like a fool. Because you're the rookie. That's the funny thing. You're the one that's calling me a noddy. Sorry, guys, if I'm ranting again about the, uh, about the car punter. But yeah, I beat him. I beat him. <laughs> and um, what was the other one? There was a couple of others. Obviously, they still put thumbs down and all that stuff on my videos. I don't really care about that. If 100 people like my videos, yeah, and 20 don't, I don't really care. If I was getting 50 50 ratio, I'd be like, oh, Jesus, Nick, I think you're, you're, not, you know, you're not going too well. But my YouTube's just going like that at the moment. And I'm like, honestly, it's crazy. I stopped looking a while back, like I keep, I keep saying it, but I used to look at my videos all the time, like look at the views, and I'd be like, Jesus Christ, I've got 400 views on my on my, my carp fishing video. Like now I don't really look. And um, yeah, so um, my YouTube's just been slowly going up. I really do appreciate it, guys. It's been really cool. I, I haven't really been looking on it, on the views and that too much, because after the Scott Baldy scan video, it just kind of went, oh, I went crazy. So I was just like, oh, I'm just gonna ignore it and just make videos. Yeah, I thought I was just gonna ignore it and make videos, you know, didn't worry about views, you know what I mean? Um, and I've been looking and like my views go, have gone been going crazy and my subscribers, I, it's crazy. I think I'm nearly on, I'm on 3,700 subscribers now. I literally looked this morning. That's like crazy, you know? So thanks very much guys. Do really appreciate that. That's really cool of you all. Um, but yeah, I've lost me, I lost me, me trolls. I kind of miss them in a way. <laughs> Um, we get the old thumbs down by them all, you know, standard. Even, um, you no, know, it's great in pulling. He had like 30 thumbs down on one of his videos. I was like, my God, man, he caught like 20 off fish. You're like, what are people doing? Oh, what, well, he didn't put a poppy on his an hooking mat, you know? People are so weird about stuff like that, man. Well, I got an hooking mat. I'm not saying I didn't use one. I'm just saying, like, some of the stuff people use. I haven't used an hooking mat. Some place. This place here, I don't even need one. This is a mosh pit, muddy as anything. It's, mo it's um, what's it called? Peat. So, look, you didn't need an okay mat, but I do one because otherwise I'll have everyone crying on my bloody videos, wouldn't I? Um, I never used to bring an okay mat here. I'm fishing for tench on marsh pit. Literally, it's just as moshy as anything. Moshy, I keep saying moshy. Marshy. Um, this is all like a floodplain, this area. So it's terrible. Um, but yeah, um, and I've only had to, I blocked two guys. One was, uh, you know who he is, Martin Taylor. He was a muppet, man. That is one guy I would say, Carp Hunter is quite funny because he's an idiot and he, he makes me laugh. But he, that guy was just, he was vile, man. I, I would have beat him up, honestly. If someone goes to me, that's Martin Taylor. I'll, deesh, deesh. <laughs> I really would have. He was doing my tits in, man. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to block him. I don't try to block people or anything like that. I don't really care, you know? People want to comment, comment, you know? And I'll just delete your comment if you're an idiot. Um, but if it's just disagreeing with me, I don't really care. Like I said, um, but he was just so annoying, man. Some of the stuff he, again, he's like another guy. He didn't know what he talked about. What are you using butt leads for? So, like, mate, do you know how many videos people use butt leads for? Go and look at some proper videos, mate. Proper, proper fishing. And you see people using butt leads, you muppet. Um, there's reasons when you don't use them. But, Jesus, if you don't use butt leads, you sound like more rookie than I do, mate. Trust me, on a pressured water, you want your line pinned down. You want your line going directly to your lead, you muppet. Um, anyway, and plus, like I said, playing fish makes everything so much easier. Um, sorry, guys, my throat's messing around. See, like, it's moved by about that far. It's not a fit, it's just a rod knocking it all the time. Um, anyway, it's just rather really rubbish on about the, the... The people said to me, don't address the, tr the trolls and that. Well, they have, and they disappeared, haven't they? You notice that? Look on some of my videos. And that's not because... Uh, the only ones I've deleted is where me and them, me and one person, just constantly arguing. Because it's just, what is the point, in it? You know? No one wants to see that. Me just going, you're a muppet, you're a muppet, you're a fag, you're a fag. You know, it's just pointless. So... I thought, well, I ain't gonna bother doing it. I'm just gonna delete those ones. But other ones I've just left on there. Um, but yeah, I blocked him. I blocked, yeah, I blocked two people. And all the rest I just left on there. Um, and one guy even changed his YouTube name. Because I noticed he commented before, James Blunt, you muppet. Um, he was James Blunt, commented some weird comment. And I was like, you're a muppet, go away. And then I went back on the comments and his name had changed. Well, that's weird. 
So he actually changed his name, and it's the same comment, but a different name now, not James Blunt. So I was like, right, you're getting blocked, you weirdo. It's probably Martin Taylor again, hiding all carp on that. <laughs> I know why carp on it did it, though, because you know why he did it? It's because he wants to be a YouTuber. Guarantee you that's all it is. He's a little, little, blah, 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 blah. Uh, because he wants to be a YouTuber. He wants friends. That's all it is, isn't it? That's why you were trying to diss me all the time, because you want to be my friend, and I didn't like you. So uh, you notice that with people. If you're on my YouTube and you talk to me, any slight disrespect, I'm just like, bang. <laughs> I don't care, man. I got like, like I said, I'm not a TV personality. I ain't got to care about that stuff. I'm gonna be real as I am, you know. If you talk rubbish on my YouTube, I'm gonna tell you, do you want me? I don't care, you know. Um, that's just the way I am. I, I, that stuff just does my head in. One guy the other day. There we go. That's what I mean. And it stops now, doesn't it? <laughs> Is it moving? Can you see all that little stuff down there? Hard oh, to see, to be honest with you. But I think I'm gonna get a bite in this. I've gone hard oh, to zoomed in too long, so I've only got one camera, obviously. This is my phone on a bank stick, gaffer taped on. And I do apologize sometimes about the qualities of my videos, but um, I'm doing it on my mobile phone with a bank stick, gaffer taped on. I don't earn much money. <laughs> um, I live on quite low wages, so uh, there's no way I can go out and just spend loads of money on a decent camera and a microphone. <laughs> so uh, I have to save up for these things. I'm um, teaching the boxing again at the moment. Uh, I teach uh, for cancer research boxing. I've got 43 boxers to train to fight. You see that little flash then? That's the fish on the float. So yeah, I've got to teach 43 boxers tonight. And uh, that's how I get a lot of my more money. Um, I only run a small gym. Um, I have many students. Well, I do have a few students, but you know what I mean? I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, basically, I haven't got a massive gym. I don't own loads of money, basically. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, roundabout way. Um, as you can tell by my gear, anyway, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy decent gear if I had money. I didn't care about money. Never have. Um, that's why I'm a fighter. <laughs> if you care about money, you wouldn't be a fighter for that way, unless you're Floyd Mayweather. Because um, you didn't get paid much when you fight. Uh, especially for the injuries and the stuff you take for it. And there we go. I should be talking about the fish in here. Um, but yeah, look. The float will just... It's not even doing it that bad now. It's quite annoying. But a minute ago, honestly, it was dipping. It's got to see that like, it just moves all over the shop. And uh, it makes you think, uh, it's actually last time it went under. You know, it would do that quite a lot. And it's not it's not fish, trust me. It's the little fish hitting the float. So anyway, I'm gonna put you back now before I get a run or something and I'm bloody zoomed in. I have to try and zoom out and do God knows what. All right. I can't believe that, man. I'll show you on the camera, but I hooked into a, definitely a tench. I don't know if I foul hooked it or not, but played it for a couple of seconds, just come off, and that was on a worm. But it's definitely fish feeding down there. There's loads of fizzing going on. And I thought, that's a bit weird. And I weren't had a bite yet, and suddenly I got a bite, and even though the rod were ruining my presentation constantly, um, the float was just going crazy. I just waited for it to proper sink under, and then hit it. So right, that would have been two tench. <laughs> Gotta get one now. Alright, find me on the float rod. Brad wasn't doing the business. This isn't so particularly good. Not sure if it's Neil. Right, it's a big change.
was epic fight with the tents today. Uh, it's took me a while there, I'm not gonna lie. Even your mouth. Mr. Wormy. And that's one thing I love about wild tench. No bad mouths. Nothing worse than seeing a tench, in my opinion, with a bad mouth. They're such beautiful fish. There we go, look at that. Absolute stunner. On the float as well, it's a really weird little bite. Um, it was just dipping under, I thought a strike, and boom, we were in. Right, here we go then, guys, a little update. Been here, oh, stop wobbling. I've been here four hours now, and uh, I've had two tench and lost one. Lost one on the float, and uh, had one on the pop-up and one on the float. Um, problem I've had is that both those cart rods weren't even fishing for a good hour and a half. So that's the problem you see in here. It's like hit and miss. I thought they were in clear areas, so they obviously weren't. It was in right bit of weed. I mean, literally pulled it back, and there was no way I was going to get a hook hold in that. Thought it'd been weird. No bleeps, no touches, nothing. I thought I had one on the float. Well, I had another one on the ledger yet. And there we go. That was the reason. Both of them weren't fishing. So I changed that over from a bottom bait to a pop-up. Um, so I'm hoping that the pop-up's gonna, gonna work, otherwise they're hoping the float. That's why you've got to have more than one rod in here, you see? Because otherwise I could've just been fishing with the float and that's so hit and miss, you know? So anyway, ciao for now. All right then guys, it's the golden rud. I thought I'd finish off to try and catch a rud on a worm. I actually had a pike as well, but for some reason, well, I ran out of memory. I had any little jack pike like last time, caught him on a worm, seen him striking at the fish I was catching. So I'll get this back in. All right, there we are. All right, guys, I'm gonna finish the vlog there. Um, had a really good session, two tench, lost a tench, a pike, and a nice golden rud. Uh, I think I got on camera, me playing the pike, I just ain't got a video of it. It was only tiny, nothing special, you know? Um, but it just shows, you know, when you get bored, you know, I feel like, oh, there's nothing going on. And um, the cart rods have just been dead for the last couple of hours now. It's just nothing. It's really sunny and bright. So there we go. Anyway, happy days. And then look at all this mess behind me. It's like trolleys and all sorts. Um, but anyway, right. Anyway, that was a really good session. Um, like and subscribe to my channel. Bing, bang, bosh.